tonight on Hotel Hell. I'll be investigating a murder mystery in the Idaho town of Coeur d'Alene. But the victim isn't a person. It's the Roosevelt Inn. <coughs> there are plenty of clues as I dust the fingerprints. It's like someone's ashes in an urn. And uncover... horrific stains. Oh, God. Brilliant. The prime oh, suspect now. is the owner, a Sherlock Holmes wannabe who disguises himself as a chef. We must cook the fabulous food. I can't even boil an egg. That was raw. <laughs> You're a <laughs> joke. I'm gonna kill him. Just talk to my hand. I've got to solve the case before there's another victim, the owner's marriage. I just feel like I'm... I'm gonna suffocate. Surrounded by stunning lakes and close to two major ski resorts, Coeur d'Alene is one of Idaho's premier vacation destinations. It's also home to the Roosevelt Inn. The inn is a 16-bedroom converted schoolhouse owned and run by one of its former students, John Hoff. The Roosevelt Inn is the first hotel I've ever actually owned. I was up here signing the papers and I called my wife, Tina, and I say, we now own the Roosevelt Inn. And all of a sudden, I hear this, because <laughs> she started crying. I did not want to buy the hotel, but John really did. I have told John many times that he won't be cold in the ground, and I'm on my way home to Kentucky. OK, John, The Roosevelt Inn is not just hell for Tina. It's hell for the guests who have to put up with the consequences of John's eccentric behavior. Sorry, we're not trying to be a pain. Yes, you are. I would say that the hotel is struggling because it's dated, it's old. It smells funny, I know. It smells old. Probably because it is old. And the food coming out of the inn's shoebox-sized kitchen is as bad as the decor. But not by the oh, oh, flavor. Oblivious to the problems, John's performance never stops. I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. I'll ask questions, you'll give answers. And I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. As John is more focused on playing dress up. How was that, Watson? Than on being an innkeeper. John refuses to grow old gracefully. It's Halloween for John every day. He loves to dress up. It's the curse! It's the bloody curse! Once a month at the Roosevelt, we put on a murder mystery and dinner. How's everything going in here for you? Fine. Okay. I basically do everything. Uh, you want to finish making up this bed and I'll do the bathroom? OK, great. I feel my dad doesn't appreciate my mom. My mom works three times harder than my dad does. There are times that I'll come in, and she's out busy doing something, and he's sitting on the couch reading a book. As the business has suffered, so has John and Tina's relationship. We actually had to go through marriage counseling. I don't think John understands the sacrifice I've made. Unless I can get this place on the road to recovery, John and Tina will lose everything. If I lose the Roosevelt, I don't just lose my job, I lose my home. I become unemployed and homeless in one fell swoop. Dang it! I don't think we're going to pull out of this one. I'm here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I seriously hope this place is better than the other holes I've stayed in. Oh, my God. Look at that. They say all publicity is good publicity. But with a billboard that old-fashioned, I'm not so sure. You're joking, aren't you? Come on. The Roosevelt Inn bed and breakfast. It's like something out of the Adams family. Roosevelt School. At least looks grim from the outside. Hello. Welcome to the Roosevelt. Good to see you. I recognize that voice. You're Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Well, <laughs> good to see you. My God, look at those chairs there. Are they from school? They are. Those came out of the first grade classroom. Well, look, you almost fit. A, a reception for dwarfs or just... <laughs> First impression from the outside, it's almost like walking into a funeral parlor. Oh! It smells like as well. What is that? Is that... Did the dog do a... Oh, boy, I sure hope not. Oh, Rohan. Jeez, man. 
This is our dining room. Who's the chef here? I saw a billboard of a guy with the most hideous hat on, <laughs> covered in trees and, like, this six-foot yes. hat. <laughs> it's kind of uh, grown into Jean-Pierre, the mad French chef of the Roosevelt. Because you're in Coeur d'Alene, is a French name town, you know, so we must cook the fabulous food and wear this outfit. <laughs> now you'll see uh, school photos yes. down the hallway here, and these are of kids that went to school here at the Roosevelt, and the ones with the arrows pointing at the really cute, adorable little boy. That's me, of course, because I went to school here. Oh, you went to school? My elementary school. Who wants to live in their old school? It's like getting a detention that never ends. The guests get to hang out down here with the dogs and watch TV. You are kidding me. You can't smell those dogs? Oh, yes, I can. The dogs, actually, believe it or not, Gordon, are one of the highlights here. Now you're sounding deluded. What's next? Our little ballroom or our multi-purpose room. Oh, come on. Rohan, you're not supposed to be in this room. Don't you think this place could at least had some form of makeover? Well, sadly, Gordon, we renovated this room four years ago. This is new. Stop. No. This room looks like it was last decorated in 1908, not 2008. And how much do you spend on this? 54,000. 54,000? Five, four. Yeah. Not 5,400, 54,000. I know, lovely, huh? And does it generate money? No. I can't believe anyone would want to rent that space. It's hideous. I'm dying to have a look upstairs. It can't get any worse. It could get worse. And what's your uh, occupancy across the year? Probably around mid-20s. 20% across the board. Ouch. <laughs> I am amazed you find it so funny. This is your room. OK. What's with all the pink? It's like someone threw up strawberry milkshake all over the place. My room has two levels, each as bad as the other. Oh. Everything looks like we're in a time warp. I mean, it's so dated. So, my room, how much do you pay to stay in here? Uh, 319 dollars $319. Bloody hell. I'm speechless. 13-year-old <laughs> decor, $319 yeah. a night. Can I ask you something? Fire away. Why do you think everything's a big joke? Because you're very critical. I'm here to get this place right. But what I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. I'm going to give you the truth. And if you don't like that, then I'm out of here. What do you want me to do? Get no, angry just... and punch nah. you? You want to punch me? Uh, you go well, first. Maybe I do want to punch you a little bit. But I can become physically very, very violent and have, in the past, people get hurt. There's your keys. John. John! You can't just walk away. Where are you going? Since I checked into Idaho's Roosevelt Inn, I've been unimpressed by the horrible decor. What's with all the pink? It's like someone's vomited well, everywhere. And the dated event space that smells like wet I mean, dog. The dogs actually are one of the highlights here. But the biggest problem here <laughs> is the owner, John, who seems to think it's funny that he's in is a disgrace. The only time he stopped laughing was when I confronted him with how bad things really are here. What I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. Here's your keys. John, you can't just walk away. While John hides from the truth downstairs, I'm going to have a closer look at my room. It's like someone's ashes in an urn. An absolute mess. That's what the rug's on the floor for. Just gross. Look at the dust on there. Most disgusting of all is the dust magnet hanging over my pillows. I hope I'll get a sense of what's really going on here from John's wife, Tina. Gordon, this is my lovely wife. How are you? I'm stressed out. What hotel were you running before this? I was running a dental office. I worked in a dental office. I wasn't running anything Did except it? my home. <laughs> so why would you go from sort of teeth to a hotel? Because he bought a hotel. <laughs> so you bought the hotel? It was my negotiation. You negotiated. You both bought it? Yes. Willingly or unwillingly? Unwillingly. 
I was very happy and content with the life that we had. So when John told me that we were buying the Roosevelt, I burst into tears. How much did you buy it for? 700,000. 700,000. How much did you spend on it? We owe 1,100,000. Oh, so you haven't paid back the debt yet? No. To the bank owner, huh? Yeah, no, the bank owns us. God. We sold our house we had right. here. Cash in a 401k, everything we had. Oh, my word. Uh, where's your house now, what you live in? We live up in the attic. The this is my hell. I have had oh. terrible experiences here. <laughs> Business experience, financial hardship, everything's wow. just falling apart here for me. You seem serious, you seem joking. It's almost like you're playing at it. It is kind of an entertainment, though, <clears throat> to a certain degree. Uh, $1.1 million, that's an expensive entertainment. Well, yeah. I didn't realize it was this bad. How's the relationship? We're in a rough place. We went through marriage counseling, what was that, four or five years ago? Because of this business? Oh, yeah. And still working together seven days a week? Yes. 24-7, sleep in the same lady. bed. I'm ready for something to change. I'm ready for anything at this point. I just feel like I'm, I'm gonna suffocate. I'm gonna get my uh, bag all packed and I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you later. Thank you. Tina looks ready to bail out and all John can do is laugh. He thinks being over a million dollars in debt is entertainment. I think this marriage is in as much trouble as the inn. Clearly in denial, but more importantly, a man that won't man up and take responsibility. I've been told that tonight, the Roosevelt Inn is holding a murder mystery dinner. It's an event they host once a month. I have a feeling it's going to be hard to forget. And if you'll head on into there, I'll get you all checked and ready to go. You look fabulous. We usually always have a lot of fun with this. We're going to continue to have fun with this. Are you dressed in that for this evening? I play the part of Sherlock Holmes, old man. You're playing an Englishman. I am playing an Englishman, and I even have the pipe to go with it. I've studied this accent long and hard. In fact, mine is better than your British accent. I actually don't know where Gordon got his accent. He obviously doesn't practice it very much. Mine is far more authentic than his is. Absolutely. Wow. While John prances around as Sherlock Holmes, I wonder what Tina does during these events. What? Oh, my God. What Love have you, you got on? This is crazy. What happened is, to you? It's murder mystery night, sir. It's gone from an inn to Little House and Prairie. <laughs> I mean, honestly. It'll be my job this evening to cook your dinner. So while John gets to play Sherlock Holmes, his wife is stuck in the kitchen. Wake up, John. This is not the 1800s anymore. John definitely liked dressing up more for the murder mysteries because he's not in the hot kitchen. He's out there hamming it up with the guests, playing Sherlock Holmes. OK. Right. Um, I'm not too sure what to make of all this. It's a little bit bizarre. It's slightly weird. I wonder if this event even makes any money. Is this profitable? It is profitable. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, we made $200 tonight. $200 for all this work? And are they all staying over? Oh, no. Most of the locals, you know, when they come from a murder mystery, they usually don't do an overnight. Clearly, tonight's about feeding John's ego, not filling his bank account. Oh, well, that, that could explain it, then. No, no, oh, here now, here now. Oh, my word. Oh, I, I say. Oh, my <laughs> Hell, come to me, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears the game is afoot. You know, their goal with the murder mysteries has always been to get people in, but if I'm not filling the rooms, what's the point? And I would have gone away with it, too, if it wasn't for you and your meddling guests. Yes. Oh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Well, there you have it. Brilliant of all of you. Thank goodness that's over. It's time to find out from John what on earth he thinks he's doing. Sit down. You must be shattered. I'm tired. I bet you are. Stick a fork in me. That was mad. Was it mad? Yeah. You're in the kitchen, busting your ass off, working hard to serve all those people. And, John, you were out prancing around like a sort of actor. So this is the thespian thing. It's an inn. It's not a theatre. But you seem to enjoy it. You have to force yourself to like doing it. I mean, it's on stage for three hours. And... The problems at the Roosevelt are elementary. Can I just have a word with you on your own? Two Certainly. Things? Oh, sure. This place is sinking because John refuses to take anything seriously. You love being an entertainer. Don't you dare tell me that that is hard. This whole 
thing was put together for your fantasy. Well, that's kind of what this night is. It is entertainment. We put on a show. You're pretending to be Sherlock Holmes, and upstairs, we're empty. You're in the financially. We're in ruins. And if you put the same amount of effort into filling this place, just one room booked tonight would have made more profit than the whole murder mystery and all that work that went into it. I mean, this is insane. And you prance around like some idiot while your wife is slaving away in the kitchen. Do you have any care in the world apart from yourself? When you get a psychology degree, oh, when I can you one. come and tell okay. me what's wrong with me. Here we go. You obviously think you're a psychologist. Big denial again. No, I'm not in denial. I just don't know what you want. It's only your own stupidity to why we're in the this far. Well, that is probably true. So then man up and act responsible. OK, I'm done with that. Oh. I'm done with that interview. Oh. Shut up. Over. No, no. Is that, that massage we go a bit more? Yeah, no, just talk to my hand, you know. I talk to my hand. Oh, yeah. what have a, a night. Night. Have a You're good not night. 10 years old. You need to grow up and stop running away from the truth. <laughs> Joke. It was a rough first day at Idaho's Roosevelt Inn. Let me out. And last night proved to me that owner John needs to stop dressing up. Wait till I get going. And start growing up. You prance around like some <laughs> idiot. And take some responsibility for the problems at the inn. It's only your own <laughs> stupidity to why we're in the I'm done with that. But John didn't want to listen. Just talk to my hand, you know. I talk to my hand. Oh, what a <laughs> idiot. Today, I'm going to have another go at getting through to him before he heads into the kitchen to prepare lunch. You're losing money. You're on this treadmill of mistake after mistake. We may be in a elementary school, but you're not a child. And I would really wish if you stopped acting like one quickly. Is that possible? Sure. Show me what you got. Can you get to it? I don't want to cook for Gordon. I mean, first of all, he's got a huge ego of his own, so, you know. Nothing anybody else does is going to be any good. I don't even want to cook him a thing. How are we doing over here? Word has spread that I'm in town, and the dining room is full. We're all having the same five-course set menu cooked in the inn's tiny kitchen. There's a shrimp cocktail to start you off. Thank you. That's gnarly. That's ghastly. Wow. What the watery bits? What's that bit there? Um, that's probably the tomato juice, unless it's condensation from the shrimp. Condensation? Was it frozen? Yes. That's a sad looking shrimp. That's not a good start. It does really taste fresh. Okay. I will take that for you. And everyone else seems to be hating it too. How can you go for shrimp from as well? Hey, here's Gordon's. Pecan crusted salmon. Is it fresh salmon? Frozen. Frozen. That has to be the saddest looking plate of salmon anywhere in North America tonight. Mm. The seasoning. It's dreadful. Very dry. And... <laughs> Would you like me to take it for you? Yes, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll take care of you. Tastes great to me. I'm going to kill him. I just want Gordon to take a long walk off a short pier. I want him to fall into a very deep pit so he can't get out. This is pathetic. Can John cook anything? Can we cook an egg? He can cook an egg. Could you ask him just to boil me an egg? Sure a thing. Soft boiled egg. He can't possibly mess up a soft boiled egg, can he? Soft boiled egg for corn. Okay, what? Egg? Soft boiled egg. What? I'm just like going, wow. <laughs> no egg cup. No. I'll make my own egg cup. <laughs> 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 Oh, it's raw. <laughs> Is this really happening? He can't even boil a <laughs> egg. <laughs> Thing's still got feathers on it. <laughs> Could have probably cooked that another two minutes. <laughs> I am absolutely ready to boot Gordon Ramsay out of my head. Fire away, buddy. Are you having a laugh at your family's expense? No. Big tall hat. Big jacket, and you can't boil a egg. 
You want a fried egg? You want French toast, too? How about some pancakes? What the f are you doing? You don't care, do you? I do care. You're a joke. Those are what we refer to as fighting words. Gutsy thing to do, especially in a kitchen full of sharp knives. It has never been a joke for me, ever. Come play at my school. I'm the headmaster. You're acting like an absolute idiot. No, but you're no. in my house. That's right. I'm disgusted at your performance. Your big problem is you can't handle the truth. You don't like hearing it. You don't even know me. You know me. It's what? a joke. Think about your wife. You're in to $1.1 million of debt. You're forcing her to live in hell. She's telling me that. I just think of the last 13 years of what you've done. And not to you, to everybody else standing behind you. I'm tired of hearing that. I don't need it anymore. Screw it. I really don't care if he leaves. I had a horrible night's sleep on the couch because I couldn't sleep in my bed. I really need a hot shower. Oh, Now this water's freezing. I need to open John's eyes, but he walks out every time things get difficult, so I've got another plan. Have you got two minutes? We do. There's something I'd like to uh, show you, uh, both in my, uh, my room. Oh, crap. What now? What's wrong now? Please, come through. Oh. There's the jury, and they're going to hang us. Clearly, you recognize some of your guests from the past six months. We do. I think feedback is critical. First impressions walking through the door. A lot of decorations. It's kind of outdated. Outdated, yeah. Too much. Too A lot too much. going on at once. I'd like to go on to the food. Um, the general consensus? Disappointing. How was it? It was. It was too... It wasn't the value that we paid, honestly. Show of hands, how many of you would return and stay here again? None of our guests would return. I'm kind of speechless. I, I'm, I, uh, I didn't expect this. I thought, it was, I thought we were better than that. That's the most valuable information you've had in 13 years. I thought we were a lot better than this, and that, that is uh, a view that is changing. You've got to put yourself in the guest position. You know, you give me feedback on everything you've seen and experienced, but there's something I'd like to point out that none of you have seen. Please. Would you be so kind to put a pair of these on, please? Oh, my gosh. Can this just get any more terrible? I don't think so. Last is on. OK. This black light is going to show up any bodily fluids. Let's start with the, uh, the pillows, shall we? Yes, sir. Oh, my god. Like someone urinated on it. Absolutely disgusting. If you think that's bad. <laughs> this kind of stuff hasn't been weeks. That's, that's years. Oh. oh, my. Absolutely hideous. Horrified. Disgusted, grossed out, kind of want to go vomit. You kind of trust that things are going to be. You have the right to and you, that. you have the. This is just as bad as it can possibly be. I mean, I'm disgusted. I. <sighs> How does that make you feel? It Dirty. makes me actually feel sick to my stomach. Mm -hmm. That I slept. Glad on. I took a shower, but now I'm wondering about the shower. I'll let you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all very much. Thank you. This is me. I mean, I've put my heart and soul into this. <laughs> it's just so embarrassing. I had to do this because you won't listen to me. And John just laughs at every problem. I understand. I understand now. I'm worried about Tina. Hearing from the guests and seeing those stains seemed to hit her pretty hard. Tina? Yes. Have you got two sex? I'm not here to hurt you, I'm here to help you. I'm just 
banging my head against the wall with John. Well, I know what we do is not perfect, but I thought what we did was better than that. John's got to get out of this bubble. He's an innkeeper. But he's constantly joking and shrugging responsibility. And now he has to start looking at himself. The thing that probably bothers me the most is John just refuses to understand my need to have my part of the dream. I don't like living and eating and breathing my work 24-7 and never, ever having a place to go that I can get away. We're not happy. No. I'm not. <clears throat> At the end of the day, I usually lay down in the bed, and I know this is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I'd leave here tomorrow if I could leave here tomorrow. I'm ready to just walk away from this and just forget it. I want to leave. I want to get out of here and go away. You can't give up. 13 years of being unhappy is not a molehill, it's a mountain. If you have a voice, you've got to stand up. You absolutely have the right to be happy. I mean that. I guess maybe I needed somebody to say, you have a right to be happy. So, that was good. Thank you. I'll see you later. Okay. I promise you I'll make a difference, and I mean that. Last night, John's wife, Tina, was at a breaking point. Feel happy? No. Oh. And I'd leave here tomorrow if I could leave here tomorrow. After talking, I realized how bad things really are here. And I promise to make things better because Tina truly deserves to be happy. Good morning, darling. Good morning. How are you? Um, I'm here. You're here. <laughs> um, let's catch up, shall we? Let's get out okay. of this little cubby hole. OK. Um, maybe downstairs. I can't believe that John and Tina have spent $60,000 on a ballroom that they never use and smells like dog. Looking at this inn, there's a, a huge missed opportunity. The potential of this room is extraordinary. And this has to be used as a way to get people into the bedrooms upstairs and make money. Exactly. How often do you use this room? Twice a month. Night. That's crazy. It is. Have you ever thought about employing a wedding planner to actually book this place out? I have one that I'm working with. I've been working with her for just about a year now. I don't pay her a salary. Right. It's her wedding. If we score a wedding, we both get paid. So yeah. she's motivated to sell it. For me, it's a big missed opportunity. You know, once you've held an amazing wedding and you've got such great feedback, it just spreads. OK, if it's one I want to see, um, I'll see you later. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. This does not stack up. I'm going to go meet the wedding planner because there must be something that John and Tina aren't telling me. Hi. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise. Where should we start? Well, you want to come on over and we'll have a seat? And... Shall we? Uh, yes. Thank come on you. over. The Roosevelt. Um, what would you say the key? Problems are. It's dated. It's um, it's hard to sell ten day old bread. Right. It's, you know, brides are young. They're sophisticated. They're on their phones. They're seeing what the rest of the world is doing. You know, a big thing with selling the ballroom is the colors. That only matches a tiny percentage. You can either go burgundy, ivory, or navy blue, and those colors are so dated anyway. Dumb. It's terrible. And then you walk downstairs and. The smell. I had one girl literally say, I've got to go upstairs. The smell is going to make me sick. John doesn't strike me as someone that I'd want to put my wedding in his hands. As a host, how is he? We have had some issues um, last summer with him coming out and dancing. At the guest wedding? Yes. Like ballroom dancing or? It was more like Macarena type line dancing style. Oh my god. I mean, how awkward was that? It was mortifying. <laughs> If you just bear with me whilst I make some changes. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, you are the key to their success going forward. Would you give them one more chance? Okay. I'm in. Thank you. Good well, to see you too. Good to see you. Thank you. All. Thank you, darling. Now that Misty is on board to help the Roosevelt, I'm going to make one last attempt to see if John is ready to change. How are you feeling? 
I'm not here to hurt your feelings, John, but you have a huge defense mechanism. I have an attitude. I want to help, but you are a very tough, stubborn, selfish individual to get through to. Yeah, truth hurts. It's not a sign of weakness to put your hand up and ask for help. And I don't want to butt heads. I don't want to butt heads either. Gordon, I've got two options here. I can close up the business, walk away from it, give it to the bank. The other option is, I know I've done this to myself. I've done this to my wife. Uh, I've got to find a way to get out of it. This has been your dream, your ambition, and she just followed suit. You're correct. You have one amazing, loyal lady there. I don't deserve her. Yeah, I'm a pig sometimes, there's just no doubt about it. Yeah. Trying to change that. She's not the one that should be suffering because of what I did. And I haven't even considered that in years. Let's start making this place better. I need you committed. I want the help. I want to make this work. Coming up, has John's change come too late? I've, I've quit dreaming. Now that John's finally turned the corner... I'm a pig sometimes, trying to change that. It's time to sit down with Tina and get to the heart of their relationship. I'm so pleased that we've got to a place that we can start making steps in the right direction. But this is a family run in, and you need your time out, and you need to cut your dear lady slack. You need to learn the importance of being a happy couple. What have you got to say? Yeah. We've been so wrapped up in this and everything we do that... don't even know where to where to go with romance anymore it's like I'm so self-consumed with all of this just the ability to just have a conversation with you understanding my my feelings I have wishes and ambitions there are things that are important to me that are vitally important to me you have to support that if you're not prepared to support each other in each other's roles, then it's never, ever going to work. You need to be happy together. I want to know what your dreams are again. I haven't heard a dream from you in years. I don't even know what your dreams are anymore. I don't know what my dreams are anymore. <laughs> I've, I've quit dreaming. I want you to start dreaming again. Mm. And then I want you to share those dreams with me. Because I love you. I know you do. I told all my girls they were princesses. And you are too. I haven't treated you much like royalty. I do feel that Gordon has helped John appreciate me more and see what's going on inside of here should matter to him. Now that they're talking again, I want to give Tina and John a lesson in something else they've not done well for a long time. Wow. Cooking. In any inn, country, hotel, it's all about comfort. And what I learn immediately from you is that you're trying way too hard. You've got a shoebox of a kitchen that you can't swing a cat in. You shouldn't be cooking five course meals in there. OK. You're not a chef. No, I'm not. You shouldn't be on a billboard. I shouldn't be. A delicious home-cooked meal. That's all I'd expect to see. That's all I'd expect to smell when you come through that door. So I put together a list of dishes for the whole week. Something that you can cook in one pot. Fabulous. Let it cook itself. <laughs> really fabulous. <laughs> These are my recipes. Uh, I'm proud of them. Don't start improvising, change. Just follow them. They will work. Half an hour to get the chili on. Yeah. Fabulous. Sweet. Nobody comes here, John and Tina, expecting a five-course meal. The food was an amazing discovery that it could be so simple, so easy, so delicious. I'm glad that Gordon is in my kitchen. Tomorrow is a new dawn for the Roosevelt, and my goodness, are we going to turn the page. My team worked all night to bring the hotel into the 21st century. Now it's time to reveal the new Roosevelt Inn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> Good morning Gordon. Spring in your step, John. How are you feeling? Wonderful. 
Good. Let's go. Okay. Come in, come in, come in, please. Okay, 16 rooms, 32 guests. This hotel should be full. Oh, Welcome that's... to your new honeymoon suite. Oh. Wow. Oh. Holy. Oh, wow. Oh. John, how do you feel? Oh, this is incredible, Gordon. A honeymoon suite, <laughs> decluttered, bright, elegant. Oh. We were literally two centuries back in time with what we were doing in these rooms, and we are suddenly into now, today. It's easy. John and Tina, I'd like you both to go upstairs. A room that will be great for room service, to have a bit of romance. Oh, this is just truly beautiful. Now, coupled with selling those rooms, the big asset that was underused in many ways was downstairs. Truly, that's been a huge disappointment for me. Come with me now, and let yes. me show you the new, stunning Roosevelt <laughs> wedding space. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. I thought we had something that would be viable to help build our business, and it wasn't. It was dragging it down. <gasps> oh, good grief. Oh, holy oh, cow. Look at this. Whoa. OK, this is stunning. This is amazing. Wow. Um, Absolutely oh amazing. Goodness. I love okay. the color scheme. This is stunning. Oh, my gosh. Yes. This is the direction we need to be going in. This is the next step up, and I am extremely grateful. And I don't want to see a dog, a dog's hair, a dog's chew anywhere in this space. Understood. Now, this room should propel this business to greater heights. It has to be your biggest marketing tool. Because when you've got the wedding booked, the guests should book every room upstairs. This space and the revenue it can bring into the Roosevelt could definitely be the game changer that we've been looking for. I'd like to um, point your attention to those wonderful plates and all the glassware on the tables from my friends at Royal Dalton. That's a special gift to you worth $50,000. <gasps> no way! Really? <laughs> You've now got, you know, a solid foundation to host the most amazing wedding. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> now there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oh my god. Okay. Please. Oh, this okay. is just. You may recognize this lady. <laughs> oh, yes! yes lady. <laughs> Look at our new space! I hope Misty's gonna give us a second chance. What strikes you now walking through that room? What's the first thing that hits you? It's just, it's natural, it's it's modern, it's what the brides are looking for. They're sophisticated, they're young. This is what they want. And does it show sort of versatility in a way that it can be adapted to suit different colors? Absolutely. We can put any color in this room and it'll be wonderful. Yay! This is gonna sell yeah. itself. How does it smell? It smells wonderful! <laughs> now, here's the good news. She is prepared to give you one more chance to become Coeur Lens number one venue for hosting weddings. One more surprise, John and Tina. Missy's not just here to visit. The Roosevelt is hosting a wedding tonight. Tonight? Owners of the Roosevelt Inn, John and Tina, have come a long way from when I first met them. Personally, because I love you. And professionally. I want to make this work. And I've just surprised them with a true test for their business. The Roosevelt is hosting a wedding tonight. Wow. Tonight? When Gordon said we had a wedding tonight, instant gut-clenching terror. You're going to be cooking, serving just simple, elegant food. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, good luck. Take you ladies up to the roof. All right, go on in, ladies. Ooh, I like that bed. <laughs> oh. oh, my dress. Guests are just starting to arrive. Hi. I gave John and Tina a couple of simple but delicious wedding recipes that they could cook in their tiny kitchen, and that I knew the guests would love. This evening is going to be huge for us. You're feeling that that really wound up sense inside yourself, and it's like, holy cow. Donald, Nicole. As the couple exchange their vows downstairs, 
Upstairs in the kitchen, John and Tina are proving they are there for each other when it matters. I give you all that I am. I give you all that I am. And you may kiss your bride. You're that side, on this side, and we go bang. And then we go bang. And then, so now we... Plates and hands, guys, yep. and downstairs. Now, so... Plates and hands, serve it up. OK, ladies, let's go. Grab them and go. Grab them and go. For the first time ever, the food at the Roosevelt is putting a smile on people's faces. Try and bunch them up a little bit. It just makes it look so much neater, including Tina's. Breathe and talk, and OK, I've got this. Awesome. We're in a nice rotation here. John and Tina are a great team when they communicate properly. Okay, good. And I think the buzz they get from tonight will encourage them to keep working on their relationship. How you doing? We're rocking along here. I love it. Plates are going away, this Steven. Is the it's the best thing I've ever had. Well done. OK. How do you feel? <laughs> Where's John? Good. Well done. Oh, thank you. First time you've actually cooked. Yes. Yeah? From yes. scratch. From scratch. For an amazing wedding. Well done, both of you. Thank you. It's been a great night thanks to John and Tina's teamwork. You guys did it, even ahead of schedule. <laughs> you can do this. I'm really hoping that our future with Misty and, and our wedding business just goes through the roof. Time to go. I'm going to be a bit sad to leave this place. I think John and Tina have done a bloody good job tonight. And more importantly, I think the whole wedding has opened their eyes to the huge potential they've got here. Tonight, the Roosevelt is fully booked for the first time in years, and the inn is back on course for success. It's been a hell of a week. Yeah? Yes. Uh, tonight, prove that you both can pull this off. Once we got the system going, it, it went very well. Stick together. All right, we'll do it, like Lou. You've got every chance now. Good luck. You can have a happy, happy ever after, let me tell you. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Do again. not sneak downstairs to that dance floor. <laughs> not even heading yes. in that direction. Night night. Oh man. Oh. So gorgeous. Oh my god. Oh, there's an upstairs. Thank you, Gordon Ramsay, for giving us this opportunity. This experience obviously is not meant to be easy, but in the end worth it. So thank you very much. It was nice to say goodbye to him tonight. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing him again, actually. One potato, two potato. Bones has been missing for three months. I miss her. We all do. She left us here for us. Dr. Brennan's been here. I want her brought in. <laughs> Bones? I knew you'd come. How? Because you love me. A symbol of hope. Brandon wants us to know that solving this murder will clear her name. The season premiere of Bones, two weeks from tonight on Fox. Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'll be investigating a murder mystery in the Idaho town of Coeur d'Alene. But the victim isn't a person. It's the Roosevelt Inn. There are plenty of clues as I dust for fingerprints. Like someone's ashes in an urn. And uncover horrific stains. Oh, God. Brilliant. Oh, oh, the prime suspect is the owner, a Sherlock Holmes wannabe who disguises himself as a chef. We must cook the fabulous food. But can't even boil an egg. Oh, it's raw. <laughs> You're a <laughs> joke. I'm going to kill him. Just talk to my hand. I've got to solve the case before there's another victim, the owner's marriage. I just feel like I'm going to suffocate. Surrounded by stunning lakes and close to two major ski resorts, Coeur d'Alene is one of Idaho's premier vacation destinations. It's also home to the Roosevelt Inn. 
the inn is a 16-bedroom converted schoolhouse owned and run by one of its former students, John Hoff. The Roosevelt Inn is the first hotel I've ever actually owned. I was up here signing the papers, and I called my wife, Tina, and I say, we now own the Roosevelt Inn. And all of a sudden, I hear this, because <laughs> she started crying. I did not want to buy the hotel, but John really did. I have told John many times that he won't be cold in the ground, and I'm on my way home to Kentucky. Okay, no, the Roosevelt Inn is not just hell for Tina. It's hell for the guests who have to put up with the consequences of John's eccentric behavior. Sorry, we're not trying to be a pain. Yes, you are. I would say that the hotel is struggling because it's dated, it's old. It smells old. Probably because it is old. And the food coming out of the inn's shoebox-sized kitchen is as bad as the decor. Oblivious to the problems, John's performance never stops. I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. I'll ask questions, you'll give answers. I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. As John is more focused on playing dress-up... How was that, Watson? ...than on being an innkeeper. John refuses to grow old gracefully. It's Halloween for John every day. He loves to dress up. It's the curse! It's the bloody curse! Once a month at the Roosevelt, we put on a murder mystery and dinner. How's everything going in here for you? Fine. Okay. I basically do everything. Uh, you want to finish making up this bed and I'll do the bathroom? OK, great. I feel my dad doesn't appreciate my mom. My mom works three times harder than my dad does. There are times that I'll come in, and she's out busy doing something, and he's sitting on the couch reading a book. As the business has suffered, so has John and Tina's relationship. We actually had to go through marriage counseling. I don't think John understands the sacrifice I've made. Unless I can get this place on the road to recovery, John and Tina will lose everything. If I lose the Roosevelt, I don't just lose my job, I lose my home. I become unemployed and homeless in one fell swoop. Dang it! Uh, I don't think we're going to pull out of this one. I'm here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I seriously hope this place is better than the other holes I've stayed in. Oh, my God. Look at that. They say all publicity is good publicity. But with a billboard that old-fashioned, I'm not so sure. You're joking, aren't you? Come on. The Roosevelt Inn bed and breakfast. It's like something out of the Adams family. The Roosevelt School. The place looks grim from the outside. Hello. Welcome to the Roosevelt. Good to see you. I recognize that voice. You're Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Well, <laughs> good to see you. My God, look at those chairs there. Are they from the school? They are. Those came out of the first grade classroom. Well, look, you almost fit. A reception for dwarfs or just... <laughs> First impression from the outside, it's almost like walking into a funeral parlor. Oh! It smells like as well. What is that? Is that... Did the dog do a... Oh, boy, I sure hope not. Oh, Rohan. Jesus, man. This is our dining room. Who's the chef here? I saw a billboard of a guy with the most hideous hat on, <laughs> covered in trees and, like, this six-foot yes. hat. <laughs> it's kind of uh, grown into Jean-Pierre, the mad French chef at the Roosevelt. Because you're in Coeur d'Alene, it's a French name town, you know, so we must cook the fabulous food, wear this outfit. <laughs> now, you'll see uh, school photos yes. down the hallway here, and these are of kids that went to school here at the Roosevelt, and the ones with the arrows pointing at the really cute, adorable little boy. That's me, of course, because I went to school here. Oh, you went to school? My elementary school. Who wants to live in their old school? It's like getting a detention that never ends. The guests get to hang out down here with the dogs and watch TV. You are kidding me. You can't smell those dogs? Oh, yes, I can. The dogs, actually, believe it or not, Gordon, are one of the highlights here. Now you're sounding deluded. What's next? Our little ballroom or our multi-purpose room. Oh, come on. Rohan, you're not supposed to be in this room. Don't you think this place could at least have some form of makeover? Well, sadly, Gordon, we renovated this room four years ago. This is new. Stop. No. This room looks like it was last decorated in 1908, not 2008. And how much do you spend on this? 54,000. 54,000? Five, four. Yeah. Not 5,400, 54,000. I know, lovely, huh? And does it generate money? No. 
I can't believe anyone would want to rent that space. It's hideous. I'm dying to have a look upstairs. It can't get any worse. It could get worse. And what's your uh, occupancy across the year? Probably around mid-20s. 20% across the board. Ouch. <laughs> I am amazed you find it so funny. This is your room. OK. What's with all the pink? It's like someone threw up strawberry milkshake all over the place. My room has two levels, each as bad as the other. Oh. Everything looks like we're in a time warp. I mean, it's so dated. So, my room, how much do you pay to stay in here? Uh, $319. $319. Bloody hell. I'm speechless. 13-year-old <laughs> decor, $319 yeah. a night. Can I ask you something? Fire away. Why do you think everything's a big joke? Because you're very critical. I'm here to get this place right. But what I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. I'm going to give you the truth. And if you don't like that, then I'm out of here. What do you want me to do? Get no, angry just... and punch nah. you? You want to punch me? Uh, you go well, first. Maybe I do want to punch you a little bit. But I can become physically very, very violent and have, in the past, people get hurt. There's your keys. John. John! You can't just walk away. Where are you going? Since I checked into Idaho's Roosevelt Inn, I've been unimpressed by the horrible decor. What's with all the paint? It's like someone's vomited everywhere. And the dated event space that smells like wet dog. The dogs actually are one of the highlights here. But the biggest problem here <laughs> is the owner, John, who seems to think it's funny that he's in is a disgrace. The only time he stopped laughing was when I confronted him with how bad things really are here. What I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. Here's your keys. John, you can't just walk away. While John hides from the truth downstairs, I'm going to have a closer look at my room. It's like someone's ashes in an urn. An absolute mess. <sighs> That's what the rug's on the floor for. Just gross. Look at the dust on there. Most disgusting of all is the dust magnet hanging over my pillows. <coughs> I hope I'll get a sense of what's really going on here from John's wife, Tina. Gordon, this is my lovely wife. How are you? I'm stressed out. What hotel were you running before this? I was running a dental office. I worked in a dental office. I wasn't running anything Did... except my home. <laughs> so why would you go from sort of teeth to a hotel? Because he bought a hotel. <laughs> so you bought the hotel? It was my negotiation. You negotiated? You both bought it? Yes. Willingly or unwillingly? Unwillingly. I was very happy and content with the life that we had. So when John told me that we were buying the Roosevelt, I burst into tears. How much did you buy it for? 700000 700000 How much did you spend on it? We owe $1,100,000. Oh, so you haven't paid back the debt yet? To yeah. the bank owner. Oh, yeah, no, the bank owns us. God. We sold our house we sold had here. Cash in a 401k, everything we had. Oh, my word. Uh, where's your house now, what you live in? We live Up on in the attic. The building. This is my hell. I have had oh. terrible experiences here. <laughs> Business experience, financial hardship, everything's wow. just falling apart here for me. <laughs> you seem serious, you seem joking. It's almost like you're playing at it. It is kind of an entertainment, though, <clears throat> to a certain degree. Uh, $1.1 million, that's an expensive entertainment. Well, yeah. I didn't realize it was this bad. How's the relationship? We're in a rough place. We went through marriage counseling, what was that, four or five years ago? It's because of this business? Oh, yeah. And still working together seven days a week? Yes, 24-7, yeah. sleeping in the same bed. I'm ready for something to change. I'm ready for anything at this point. I just feel like I'm, I'm going to suffocate. I'm going to get my uh, bag unpacked, and I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you later. Thank you. Tina looks ready to bail out, and all John can do is laugh. He thinks being over a million dollars in debt is entertainment. I think this marriage is in as much trouble as the inn. Clearly in denial, but more importantly, a man that won't man up and take responsibility. 
I've been told that tonight, the Roosevelt Inn is holding a murder mystery dinner. It's an event they host once a month. I have a feeling it's going to be hard to forget. And if you'll head on into there, I'll get you all checked in ready to go. You look fabulous. We usually always have a lot of fun with this. We're going to continue to have fun with this. Are you dressed in that ceiling? I play the part of Sherlock Holmes on that. You're playing an Englishman. I am playing an Englishman, and I even have the pipe to go with it. I've studied this accent long and hard. In fact, mine is better than your British accent. I actually don't know where Gordon got his accent. He obviously doesn't practice it very much. Mine is far more authentic than his is. Absolutely. Wow. While John prances around as Sherlock Holmes, I wonder what Tina does during these events. What Lucky, have you sir. got on? This is crazy. What this happened is, to you? It's murder mystery night, sir. It's gone from an inn to Little House and Prairie. <laughs> I mean, honestly. It'll be my job this evening to cook your dinner. So while John gets to play Sherlock Holmes, his wife is stuck in the kitchen. Wake up, John. This is not the 1800s anymore. John definitely liked dressing up more for the murder mysteries because he's not in the hot kitchen. He's out there hamming it up with the guests, playing Sherlock Holmes. <laughs>